introduced between Aracher and Craig and Doran in 1940, with the first of three Class C-15s being equipped with push-pull equipment. Heading south in the cab of 67474, Aracher is left behind as the line climbs steadily to Glen Douglas Halt, which closed in 1964. From Glen Douglas, the line falls as it approaches Whistlefield on the eastern edge of Loch Long. Whistlefield was unique on the West Highland line in having no passing loop, and although surviving into the diesel era, it closed along with Glen Douglas in 1964. Eleven miles from Araka, the line reaches Gerloch Head, at which point the push-pull is left to continue its journey to Craig and Doran. April 1960 saw the two surviving C-15s withdrawn and the push-pull service replaced by a diesel rail bus. Gerloch was host to an American submarine base at Faz Lane with construction work at the base visible in the foreground. Continuing southwards, Arden Capel Crossing is passed, and after a further five miles, the line reaches Craig and Doran Junction, with the Waverley moored at Craig and Doran Pier. The signal is set against the West Highland line to allow the passage from Craig and Doran of an electric blue train only a year in service when this film was taken. After Craig and Doran Junction, the now electrified line follows the north bank of the Clyde Estuary for a further seven miles before entering the Royal Borough of Dumbarton. Situated at the confluence of the rivers Leven and Clyde, the town's fortunes were based on shipbuilding and its associated industries. The 240 foot high Dumbarton Rock is one of the most prominent features of the Clyde estuary, with the remnants of the rock's medieval castle looking down on the former Denny shipyard. Shipbuilding formed the single largest industry on the Clyde, and no feature on the Clyde would be complete without a brief look at its shipbuilding history, starting with film of what was arguably its most famous product, the Queen Elizabeth. The liner's arrival at Greenock Dry Dock in 1965 caused congestion as crowds gathered to watch the 84,000 ton ship maneuver into her berth. The Cunard liner was built at the Clyde Bank Yard of John Brown and launched in 1938, finally leaving the Clyde in the spring of 1940. She was used throughout the war as a troop carrier between the UK, North America and Australia, but in 1946 reverted to the role of a luxury transatlantic carrier. In order to combat growing competition from air travel, she had returned to the Clyde for a major overhaul, including redecoration and the installation of an open-air swimming pool. In 